Hello, and welcome to the Conscious Communion Podcast, where we traverse through the inner dwellings of the human experience through conversation. I'm your host, Danae. Join me as we explore the interconnection of creativity and community. Hello, and welcome to a long-awaited episode of the Conscious Communion. It has been a hot minute. There has been so much going on in my own personal world amidst all of the other chaos that our collective, our world, our earth is experiencing. And there's so much to hold. And with the recognition of all that I've been holding, I felt that it would be best to honor my own rhythms. And in honoring my own rhythms, I also realize what growth that has shown from my behalf to not force anything that doesn't feel resonant for the time. And it was so interesting because after having taken space just to create spaciousness for myself, life happened. Hardship happened. A family crisis was brought to the surface and brought into my field of understanding of uh, this is going to be an initiation of heart being expanded into new levels of what is possible. And while I do not have the authorization or the blessing to share the intricacies of actually what's taking place now, I have gone through quite a whirlwind the past month and a half. I initially went home and I went home to be with my family. And that felt like a beautiful ushering into a release of what previously had felt very uncomfortable. And everything went well. It was a beautiful visit. Came home back to Portland And then received the news that there was something, someone in my very close circle that was suffering and suffering with um, something that will be shared at some point, just not yet. And in understanding when someone else suffers, that that too can cause suffering and bondage with our own bodies, within our own bodies and within our own minds and our hearts and our consciousness. I allowed myself to feel it all and yet struggled to feel it all because my body was feeling like it was in survival mode. Because it was. I felt afraid. I was fearful. And I was holding on for dear life, not wanting to fully accept what was. And I'm here having this first episode back being one that invites you into where I am, into my heart, and also inviting us all to be witness to what we are experiencing in our own lives, our own inner worlds. And... Amidst the crisis that was taking place within my own family and amidst the hardship that I was witnessing before my own eyes, other things came up, right? Once something happens that's hard, it almost unravels this thread of what potentially hasn't yet been healed or fully sat with. And so... This invitation for me with this thing that has happened and been brought into our lives to be witness to gave me an opportunity to see myself and know that there was so much that I was grasping onto dear life with which was not enabling me to feel free and safe within my own experience. And I think amidst 
my own inner world and what I'm going through. Our world is experiencing so much turmoil, so much heartache, so much grief. We can all feel it. And my prayer is that we may honor it. It's really fucking hard to sit with what feels uncomfortable. And yet, the only way out is through. Sitting with ourselves, recognizing what's in front of us. Not negating what feels hard, challenging, crunchy. But inviting it with open arms so that we may feel it all. Trust its purpose. And not become attached to it. When I first heard the family news, my initial instinct was really handling it with grace. Then I went through these motions and moves of then feeling like a victim. Why me? Why is this happening to me? Why not me? It's not directly happening to me, but it's someone that's so very close to me and to witness that is hard. You want to control, you want to fix. What does it look like to let go? With everything that we're going through as a human collective, I realize that it's a privilege to grieve, to make space to cry, to feel, to go into our own inner worlds with not fearing for our lives while doing so. And because we have that privilege, why wouldn't we want to honor what we are experiencing, taking responsibility for the bondage that we hold within our own bodies, with our own minds, within our own hearts and our spirits. Ram Dass has a quote and it says, there's only one of us, one consciousness manifesting into different forms. And I believe this to be true. I believe that we are all so deeply interwoven into this one consciousness. And so if we have the spaciousness to feel safe in our own experience, if we can create that safety for ourselves to take responsibility, to detach ourselves from what is holding us in captivity, then may we, may we initiate ourselves into that beautiful ushering into setting ourselves free so that we can create more spaciousness for the collective consciousness. Easier said than done, of course, of course. And also just doing that next thing, just taking that one next step. With all that's going on, Yes, do what you can to aid and support, to be a friend to those in need. Compile resources, donate, do what you can. And also, again, return to your own inner world to take responsibility for what's transpiring in your own consciousness. There is such a beautiful opportunity for us all to experience community in new ways. And through this experience that I'm going through in my own personal life, I have been asked to be invited into this 
process of receiving, which can be really hard and uncomfortable for many of us. And yet community offers this mirroring effect where we get to open ourselves up to reciprocity. And so may we all open up our our minds, our hearts, our spirits to the reciprocal nature of what it looks like to be in synchronistic nature with each and every body, with each and every spirit. This episode will be released on November 1st, Sawin. And with that, with the celebration of now transitioning into the darker parts of the year, may we also initiate ourselves into what it looks like to delve into our layers of depth, loving ourselves with softer edges, expanding what has felt tightly bound Breathing into the crevices that feel hard to breathe into and being patient with ourselves each and every step of the way. Being patient with each other. When we create patience and space for ourselves, that then expands for our ability to do that for others. So the more you pour into yourself, the more you will be able to pour into others. I poured so much of myself into what was happening at home for me. My family is in crisis. I'm there. I'm doing what I can. And did I respond favorably each and every time? No. There was a couple times where I lost my shit and I wasn't proud of myself. And yet I lent myself the grace that I needed to then move forward and witness what I can potentially do differently next time. Taking it into my frame of reference, acknowledging it, forgiving myself and accepting it, not wishing it away Something that I've been leaning into myself is really coming into the presence of now and what that actually looks like. And so something I've been doing for myself that I wanted to share as an invitation for you all is saying to myself I understand what it feels like to be safe in my experience. And even when there's been moments, because I have been in fight or flight survival mode, fearing for what's to come, that then gives me the ability to turn something new online that regardless of what happens, I'm still safe to regulate my own nervous system. Granted, again, this is privilege. This is privilege. Not everyone has this. And because I do, I am going to do my part to play the role that I can to do what I can. I have to be honest, when the war first started, I was just coming into this knowing of what was going on with my family. And I did not have the spaciousness to invite any more in because again, I was in full on survival mode. Grasping on so tightly, kicking and screaming at points in time. And also just literally not having space for anything else. And so now that I've taken the time to really sit with the feelings of rage, of fear, of sadness, of deep, deep grief, I now have more space to hold more. And so I will. I will. 
and I will take it on because I know that I am a cyclical being. I'm a part of nature. And that with synchronistic nature that is here for us all to experience, this too shall pass. And so knowing that what is here for me now is here for a reason, I accept it with open arms, even though it's hard. And every time I soften an edge, I can make space for a little bit more. One of the things I've been doing for myself that has been so supportive for my well-being, I've been coming to my altar each and every morning. It's the first thing I've been doing. I've gone through rhythms of doing this as a practice, of course, and this time it looks a bit different for me because I'm not necessarily going to my journal maybe as I have in the past. It's not the first thing I'm picking up. I'm picking up a rosary. And this is so interesting to me because I have such, such an idea in my mind of how I want to resist any dogmatic approach to religion. And while I don't necessarily believe in the dogmatic belief of this thing, it was given to me when my family was in crisis, when I was in the hospital by a Eucharistic minister. And rather than using it to actually say the rosary, I've been using it as a form to ground. It's made of actual stone. It's made of jasper and tourmaline. Tourmaline is actually used to ground. And so the first thing I do in the morning is I get to my altar, I pick up my rosary, and I say something that I'm grateful for. Each bead for me in this moment, I'm using this as a tool to ground myself in gratitude for what is. I am using these beads to come to the altar of my heart and what is to acknowledge that I have the privilege to pray. I have the privilege to be here and to sit in holy reverence to what is. That's huge. And you hear it so often, right? Gratitude is a practice. Gratitude is a practice. It's encouraged in every which way. You hear it all the time. And it's real. It generates this ability to receive and to then give back. Another thing I've been doing for myself is making sure that I intentionally am carving out time for myself to be outside. It's a non-negotiable these days. I have to be with the earth to be reminded of these cycles that we're all a part of. Something I love to do for myself. I love to pay homage to my favorite trees, my friends. My friends, the trees. And there's a little creek walking distance from where I live. And so I walk down to the creek. I lay my back up against the tree after first acknowledging the tree and saying hello, giving it a hug. I then lay my back up against the tree, placing my feet on her roots, taking a deep breath, I energetically imagine what it would look like for her to take away the energetic tension that's within my body and then imagine what it would look like to then have it move through my body and then come back up with regeneration because all of our energy is ours. It's ours, right? It belongs to all of us and yet what is within me is mine. And so 
what does it look like for it to be filtered from Gaia herself? That's how I am finding peace and deep trust and faith in my experience. Will it look like this every single day? Absolutely not. There's been days I've literally screamed at the top of my lungs, wailed in pain, weeped. But all the practices that I've been able to encapsulate in my spiritual journey have been such a form of medicine to me in my life. And in this very now moment, it is so ever present that the stagnancy does not need to be a part of this and that the structure can be there, but loosening up the stringent nature of needing that structure can also look like giving myself the spaciousness to use whichever modality makes sense for me in my present moment, because it'll look different in each and every moment. And it has, it absolutely has. There's been days where the medicine is going to the gym or punching pillows, screaming into a pillow. And other days where it's looked like me Falling into the sweetest yin practice, yin yoga, light breathing, prayer, journal, always being out in nature. But knowing that it's my responsibility to take care of myself so that I can show up for me in all the ways that I can to experience my life as it is and part of my life is also feeling for what is happening in our sphere, in our world. Our earth is hurting. We as a people are hurting. Do what you can. Make space for yourself so you can do what you can. Love yourself a little more today so you can love someone else a little more tomorrow. I love you so much. I really just wanted to say hi. This is where I've been. I've been in crisis. I've been in survival mode. And yet, through honoring where I'm at, I have found a spaciousness in my own experience that is unlike anything I have yet to have found that I have found thus far. And so here I am, knowing for certain that these practices and these stories that you hear of taking time for yourself with self-care, taking care of your mental health while seeking a therapist, these things are real, folks. These things are real. I've been talking about it and how this story began for me, how the conscious communion even was birthed into existence. Part of it was me doing these things to then feel free to express my voice in this way. And part of that has also been taking the time out from this beautiful creative process in which I love so much to hold reverence for myself and where I'm at. And so I will be here when I can. I'm available here. I'm available now. So this is the episode that takes the pause and moves it back forward into presence, into being. I have some episodes that I recorded almost two months ago that I will be sharing and starting up again next week. It only felt appropriate for me to invite you into a piece of my heart into what I've been digesting and experiencing so that you could really feel into the conscious communion and the evolution of all that is in my here and now moment as your host. 
I love you so much. Please take care of yourself as best as you can. I'm sending you so much love. So much love. Would love to take a couple breaths with you to exit out of this space. Breathing in through your nose. And exhaling however feels good for you. Two more times just like that. <sighs> loving you, loving you, loving you. Peace, blessings, and all the respect and honor your way. Hey there, it's Danae again. Just wanted to say thank you for sharing your time and energy with me. If this podcast resonates, please like, subscribe, follow, and share if you're willing. Reviews help too, so if you're feeling the vibe, please leave a review where you can. Sending all the love. Peace.